Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Mercedes 500 SL, the R129 chassis. My introduction to the Mercedes 500 SL was when I was 15 years old. I had a summer job to earn money to restore my 1976 Mercury Cougar XR7. My dad had given me the family's worn out 1984 Ford Tempo. My high school had recently had a Disco Fresh Baby Blue 1976 Cougar XR7 donated to the auto shop program. My auto teacher, Mr. Ryan, was a lot less than enthusiastic about the gift. He really wanted more modern cars for the students to learn on. The Tempo had a blown head gasket and the bottom end was also thrashed. I proposed a trade and Mr. Ryan jumped on it. I had something closer to a muscle car. It did have a 351 modified V8 and it was rear wheel drive. And Mr. Ryan had something closer to a modern car. My neighbor got me a summer job at a small tool and die shop that also had metal presses. I operated the metal presses and cleaned the machine shop. My boss was really hands off and he really never left his office. I remember being called into his office a few times when other employees were getting reprimanded. To act as a snitcher and eyewitness. I never really gave the boss the intel or the evidence he was looking for for fear of the other employees' reprisals. I was 15 and they were mostly in their 20s and 30s. Although I never had the crap pounded out of me as the older guys had threatened, the fear was very real. No sir, I didn't see the die fall off the forklift. The boss had a gigantic print of the Mercedes 500 SL behind his desk and it had some corny phrase written above it that I was unable to find during my exhaustive Google search of Mercedes 500 SL posters. The gist was basically the Mercedes was the reward for working hard. My boss drove some kind of malaise era, completely forgettable Oldsmobile or Buick of some description. Not sure if his hard work ever got him his Dream 500 SL or not, to be honest. My hard work paid for my dream car that summer. My earnings went towards supplies like sheet metal, pop rivets, unspeakable amounts of body filler, as I tried to learn the art of bodywork. I also earned the $300 necessary to have one of my neighbors lay down a monochromatic, just like a Grand National, Corvette Arctic white paint job. After hours at the local big rig trailer repair shop, it also paid for junkyard Magnum 500s, like a proper muscle car, and 60 Series General XP2000 tires, just like the ones on my dream Saline Mustang, a proper pull-out cassette player, a good used stereo amp, and two 10-inch subwoofers. I was a pretty cool dude in grade 11 with my shiny, um, new car and driver's license. Arguably, my boss was right about the 500 SL being the coolest car in 1989. Contrary to my argument of the 1989 Saline Mustang SSC being the coolest, the Mercedes-Benz R129 SL Roadster was produced between 1989 and 2001. The R129 replaced the extremely outdated R107, which some call the closest thing to buying a new classic car. The 500 SL is offered as a two-door, two-seat Roadster with a slick automatic electro-hydraulic fabric convertible roof automated tonneau cover, and manually detachable hardtop. Designed in 1984, the 500 SL was based on the shortened floor pan of the Mercedes W124 chassis. The new SL class was introduced at the Geneva Motor Show in 1989. The SL was runner-up to the Citroen XM for European Car of the Year. Legendary Mercedes-Benz design chief Bruno Sacco has called the R129 SL his most perfect car. The R129 was produced at the Bremen, Germany plant. 200,000 4,940 R129 SLs left dealer showrooms. The Mercedes 500 SL was in many popular 90s movies. In 1991, the Princess of Wales, Princess Diana, sold her Jag XJS to lease a metallic red 500 SL and became the first member of the royal family to not use an English car. Public outrage forced Diana to return the car in 1992 and it is now on display in the Mercedes-Benz Museum. The SL was the first production car to offer a roll bar that deployed automatically in 0.3 seconds in the event of a rollover. The roll bar could be raised or lowered on command with an interior switch. Driver and passenger airbags were standard along with anti-lock brakes. Traction control was introduced for the 1991 model year and so was an electronically controlled limited slip differential. The 1996 model year brought stability control. The R129 was also one of the first convertibles to get side airbags that same year. Technical highlights. Optional ADS adaptive damping system. 
The system consists of the complex electronically controlled hydraulic system that is semi-load bearing. The system keeps the car's height consistent regardless of the load and surface irregularities. Sensors keep tab on the body angle, shock absorber shaft position, vehicle speed, and steering angle. An electronic controller switches the dampeners from firm, normal, soft, and comfort in 0.05 seconds. The fully automatic hydraulic electric soft top was insanely complicated and intricate. It often drew a crowd when raised or lowered. The soft top was also praised for its speed of operation. A hard top also came standard. Engines. The R129 came with two different engines. Initially they came with an M119 5 liter 32 valve dual overhead cam V8 that made 322 horsepower at 5500 RPM. The cylinder head was a 4 valve aluminum unit with dual overhead camshafts. The connecting rods were forged. The pistons were iron coated cast aluminum that were kept cool with oil squirters. The aluminum oil pan was baffled to prevent oil foaming and oil starvation. The intake cam timing was adjusted hydromechanically up to 20 degrees. 0 to 2000 RPM, retarded for improved idle and cylinder scavenging. 2000 to 4700 RPM, advanced for increased torque. 4700 plus RPM, retarded for improved volumetric efficiency. The second engine used was the M113 5 liter. Power output was 302 horsepower at 5600 RPM with 339 foot-pounds of torque at 2700 to 4250 RPM. The M113 had an aluminum engine block and aluminum cylinder heads. The engine was single overhead cam design with two spark plugs per cylinder. The heads had three valves per cylinder, two intake, and one exhaust. The engine utilized fracture split forged steel connecting rods and a magnesium intake manifold. Transmissions from 1989 to 1995, the 4G Tronic transmission was used. It was a pretty conventional 4-speed automatic transmission. The 4G Tronic was considered the most reliable transmission ever built by Mercedes-Benz, with some examples exceeding 300,000 miles. In 1996, it was replaced with the 5G Tronic. It was an electronically shifted 5-speed overdrive automatic transmission with torque converter lockup, typically in gears 3, 4, and 5. And it had two speeds for reverse. The 5G Tronic had an interesting feature, winter mode. Winter mode was activated by an interior toggle switch, which sets the gearbox to start off in second gear, both in drive and reverse. This feature was designed to reduce wheel spin on slippery surfaces. Differential. ASD, automatic locking differential. ASD is a computer controlled locking differential that engages automatically when drive wheel slip is detected. The system is comprised of two front wheel speed sensors and a rear deferential speed sensor that sends data to a control unit. If the unit detects slip, it engages a hydraulic pump that locks the rear differential. ASD provides better traction when you accelerate on a slippery surface. Performance The R129 performed well 0 to 60 miles per hour in only 5.9 seconds and the quarter mile in 14.4, an electronically limited 155 mile an hour top speed. Forum boys suggest a top speed of 170 miles per hour with the speed limiter disabled. Styling. Styling did not change that much over the 12 year run. The 1996 model year changes included front fender vents that had two rounded slots rather than three square slots, clear front turn signal indicators for the US models, bumpers were now painted body color, HID headlamps optional on the 500SL, 1997 updates included an optional panoramic glass hardtop. 1999 updates included color key door handles, taillights with curved faces replacing the square step lights, and standard 17-inch wheels. Interior. Like the exterior, the interior only had minor changes throughout the production run. 1995 changes included Bose stereo system now standard, rear speakers, and a sub. The odometer switched from mechanical to electronic. 1999 changes included Napa leather seats replaced the perforated leather seats. A new steering wheel design. Oil pressure gauge replaced by an oil temperature gauge. Aftermarket performance. The tuning scene for the R129 appears to be pretty sparse nowadays. I did find evidence of their once being supercharger kits. Uh, I love me a crazy engine swap. The Toyota 2JZ has been successfully swapped in at least a dozen times. Those cars must be serious sacrilegious fun. On the more Mercedes family fun side of engine swaps, later more powerful versions of the M113 engine like this 355 horsepower W220 engine are direct bolt-in affairs. Racing. This is the point in my videos where I recognize the rich racing history of the chosen model. Well, I really did not find a lot of evidence to support the R129 was really ever raced. 
I'm assuming the convertible-only body style and the general grand touring vibe and the very high cost of admission made people shy away from racing them. Although tamed by modern standards, the R129 was the most powerful Mercedes ever built when it was launched. There is this one guy that has done a BMW 5-speed manual swap and races his R129 in the Classic Auto Cup. Grand Touring is really the R129 strong suit, gobbling up miles as it effortlessly wasps down the road at high speed. High style and comfort is the R129 team. Wait, what? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting. Run. Buying an R129. Many consider the R129 the last proper Mercedes Benz. It is the last chassis built to the highest quality standards using the money is no object engineering criteria. The drive lines are reported to be bulletproof, although there are several problem areas to be aware of. The 500 SL's party piece, the soft top, is also the car's greatest weakness. A dozen hydraulic motors that perform the electromechanical ballet eventually wear out and require rebuilding. The aftermarket has come to the rescue with inexpensive replacement units, but installing them is still a costly labor-intensive adventure. Mercedes-Benz used biodegradable wiring harnesses from 1991 to 1996. These earth-friendly harnesses were prone to electrical problems caused by the insulation crumbling away over time. The harnesses cost between $900 and $1,500 and take three or four hours of labor to install. The optional adaptive dampening suspensions have accumulators that periodically require replacement. The R129 is very affordable and the time to buy is now. They are beginning to appreciate. Haggerty claims the average price to be $14,500. The price is dependent on condition. Number one condition, Concourse, are worth $46,700. Number two condition, Excellent, are worth $26,400. Number three, good condition, are worth $14,500. Number four, fair condition, worth $8,500. I found beaters for far less. It's crazy to think you could have the absolute pinnacle flagship of German engineering perfection for $3,500. As long as you don't tell your friends and neighbors that the top doesn't work. If you're mechanically inclined like me, you could buy one for peanuts and spend a couple grand in a weekend in the driveway changing suspension accumulators and hydraulic top cylinders and save yourself a bundle. Thanks for watching this episode of Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I hope you enjoyed my story of the R129 Mercedes 500 SL. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment.